Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and WWDC 25 or the Worldwide Developer Conference for 2025 is just one day away. And starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time, Apple will begin to share their keynote with the world and show an all new iOS redesign for the first time in many years. The last time we had that was with iOS 7. We've talked about this a little bit in the past, but I thought we'd go over all of the last minute leaks and what to expect. Some of them are pretty huge though. Apple has decided to change the naming of their operating system this year from iOS 19 to iOS 26. Leakers such as Mark Gurman and Apple Insider have mentioned this as well, and code found over the weekend also indicates this as well. So it looks like it's definitely going to be based on the year and the following year. Even though it's WWDC 2025, it typically releases later in the year, so they're just going to have a few months left in the year, so they're naming it after the following year. Now we do expect this overall update basically to have this whole redesign and it will look similar to sort of this translucency and transparency and Apple is referring to it as digital glass. This is according to Mark Gurman and it's loosely based on vision pro. So if you've seen the vision pro sort of interface, which is really nice, it's got nice translucency, transparencies, shadows, and more, it should look something like that, but not completely like that. And it's said to no longer have round icons. Some people early on said that it would have round icons throughout similar to watch OS and vision OS, but instead we'll have some redesigns to the icons or maybe some different looks to go along with the translucency and transparency and different light throughout. But other than that, they should largely stay the same. Also, we should see some toolbars and tabs redesigned along with app icons, like I mentioned, and different buttons throughout and sort of some pop-out menus similar to what we see in the sports app. If we go to my leagues, you'll see it pops out. We can go into settings and then see our different settings there. So we could go in and change that a little bit easier, maybe directly throughout the app. And we're expected to have all new interactions and a full redesign here. Also, we'll get a redesign to things such as widgets that should have that translucency in glass. We also expect some battery optimizations this year, but they may not come until later when it launches more around September. And that's due to Apple working on the iPhone 17 Air, it seems. So we do expect them to release a thinner iPhone later this year, of course, with a smaller battery, and they would need some battery improvements for that. So it seems like they're going to use AI to improve battery, sort of seeing what you're doing, and then maybe turn off processes in the background based on those activities and maybe save significant amounts of battery. We could also, of course, finally know when it's done charging, whether you're plugging that in or charging via MagSafe, we could see an actual time frame like we do on things such as the Mac when it's plugged in, it could tell us how much time is remaining and maybe more information that would be helpful at this point. Now we do expect some apps to get redesigned as well. The apps that we expect to be redesigned, one of them we've seen already or heard about already, and that's the camera app. It's going to be simplified a little bit more, maybe have some new controls as it's gotten a bit confusing. We have different video options now, everything from slow motion to different things when you go in maybe to video, we've got cinematic modes, slow-mo, and it's a little bit confusing to go through whether it's spatial video or everything else. So that should be optimized, get a new look to it, be a little bit easier to use. Safari is also expected to get a redesign to go along with this translucency or digital glass. And we also expect the phone app to be updated according to Mark Gurman. The phone app is said to combine some of the features such as recents, contacts, and voicemail into a single view, which can be toggled on or off if you don't like the look of it. So it looks like they're working on that also. Messages is also expected to get an update where it would have backgrounds where you could set the image maybe or have it generated using AI and then it will sync between devices. Hopefully they do this for wallpapers and the lock screen as well. So you maybe set it here and have it sync across to the iPad, but I haven't heard of any mention with that. But if it can do it in messages, it certainly could do it throughout all of the OSs. You'll also be able to create polls, it seems. So we have some options here. Maybe we'll be able to create a poll throughout maybe message groups if we want to ask some questions. We also expect the preview app to be added to the iOS update where it would be from the iPad and iOS and it's currently on the Mac. So preview is a nice way to export some maybe different photos, change the way they are, crop them and have just a preview to work on PDFs and things like that. There's also said to be a new game app. This would incorporate things such as game center and also bring over things such as in the app store where we have arcade and different games, bring this all into a unified app 
where we'd have more access directly to gaming. So it looks like Apple wants to bring this in as a separate app and it will be pre-installed for many people. Notes will also gain some sort of update that allows for markdown export according to 9to5Mac. So that should be a nice update where you'll have that if you use markdown. One thing we've heard before is you'll be able to sync networks. So if you, maybe you're on a hotel network or public Wi-Fi, or maybe you're at a coffee shop, that network would sort of sync over iOS, iPad OS, and you wouldn't have to remember the passwords anytime you travel regularly. One other thing we've heard from nine to five Mac is a fully animated lock screen. This sort of goes along with some wallpaper we've seen in the past. So maybe we'd have a fully animated lock screen with artwork you choose. Maybe we'll have better wallpapers and things like that. And I would love to see that in the future. We also expect some improvements to AirPods. So going along with iOS 26, we could have improved device pairing, which would be great. And while it's typically good, sometimes it is a little bit buggy. We could also have some new head gestures. And if you're using AirPods, if you fall asleep, maybe you're using a sleep mode, it could sense that and then pause the music once you fall asleep. There's also said to be some sort of studio quality mic upgrade for the AirPods. And I don't know if that's hardware related or just based off things they've learned by using the OS. And also you may be able to use the button on the AirPods to control the camera shutter. So you may be able to just click this and use that as an additional control for the camera shutter. All of those things are rumored to be coming soon. And so hopefully we'll see those at WWDC. As far as Apple intelligence goes, the focus will not be on AI this year as Apple is taking longer to get that right. AI should be smarter though, as Apple continues to work on it and Siri hopefully will get some sort of upgrade, but this won't be the large language model Siri as that's expected to come later on. Shortcuts is also expected to get an AI update. So if you use shortcuts, there could be different changes here, utilizing Apple intelligence to make them work more functionally across your OSs. And also translations is said to get a big focus this year where it would get an AI upgrade where you could use it in real time on your devices. It would allow for things such as live translation during phone calls. So maybe someone could speak in Spanish, but you would hear them in your native language, mine such as English. And then I would speak English and they could hear me in Spanish. That would be incredible. We've seen that from Google this year. So that makes sense where it would work on that as well as messages and throughout all of the OS. And then also later this year, on AirPods. So all of that makes sense. And that definitely seems like a good way to use Apple intelligence. One odd thing to me though, is Genmoji is said to get an upgrade. So if we go back into here, go into maybe generate something with Genmoji, Genmoji is said to be able to combine multiple Genmoji. So maybe you have a turtle with a hat and then you could have something separate such as maybe a cane off to the side and you could combine that, or you could combine maybe a bat and a ball or the bat hitting the ball, something along those lines. So you'll be able to join or combine Genmoji. It seems I don't ever use this, but let me know if you use that. Now that upgrade to Siri, I mentioned that's going to be delayed according to Mark Gurman, it could be one to two years away. So the one that would be similar to maybe chat GPT's chat bot or Gemini's chat bot could be a couple years away. Also, Gemini is not coming right away to Apple intelligence options like we have with ChatGPT, as that can be delayed due to litigation. Now we've heard already about all of the accessibility features coming to iOS 26. And we saw that on May 13th, where Apple revealed that such as braille access, accessibility reader, live listen, vision OS, and personal voice updates, as well as nutrition label for accessibility features in different apps. So that's already listed. I'll link it in the description if you haven't seen it yet. And I have a separate video covering all of these features as well, as far as what's new there, but we should see those with iOS 26. As far as supported devices, the iPhone 11 is still getting support, but phones older than that will not, it seems. So the iPhone 10R, 10S, and 10S Max are said to lose support. Now we won't know this 100% until Apple announces it tomorrow, but it seems like that's likely at this point. Now, as far as iPad OS, we do expect some updates there as well. As far as iPad OS 26, we've heard some good news. If you want to multitask on this, where it could be more like a Mac when using a mouse or trackpad. What that means exactly, we don't know, but according to Mark Gurman, it could be much more like multitasking on a Mac this time around. We should get an updated stage manager as well, and we could even get a menu bar on top, according to Majin Buu on X. 
The Apple Pencil is set to get a digital read calligraphy pen, and the keyboard will allow you to move seamlessly between Arabic and English with a bi-directional mode. So these are things to expect for iPad that are in addition to what we're already getting on iOS 26. When it comes to support on iPad, it seems they're only going to drop one according to the latest rumors, and that would be the iPad 7th generation. So that may be the only one that doesn't get support this year. When it comes to watch OS 26, we're expecting some sort of design change to make it consistent with all the other operating systems and updates this year. And we could get a control center update as well that allows for third party support. We have that on iOS as well. This year they added that where we could go into the control center, add all of these different controls with iOS 18 and add them for third party options as well. Chat GPT, we can have them for things such as Gemini halide for cameras, Instagram, and other options. So if a third party developer wants to make that, we may see that on watch OS 26 also, as far as anything else on watch OS 26, well, support wise, it looks like they may not drop support for any. So the Apple watch SE second generation all the way up to the Apple watch ultra two should be able to get this update. So series six should be supported. Everything else would not be as far as anything else. We don't really know if there's any up additional updates coming to watch OS 26. When it comes to Mac OS 26, well, we do expect some updates there again with design consistency across everything. We know that the name is supposedly Tahoe this year. So Mac OS 26 Tahoe, and it would have a new design to match iOS. We should also get the same stage manager update on Mac OS. And we also know that we're getting vehicle motion cues and all the other accessibility updates, but we don't expect anything major other than what we've already mentioned. As far as device support, we do expect the MacBook Air M1 or later to be supported, MacBook Pro 2020 four port model or later, iMac 2020 or later, Mac Mini M1 or later, Mac Pro 2019 or later, and Mac Studio. So all of those are expected to still be supported. Anything outside of that may not be supported. Now, as far as tvOS, we do expect a design update there. tvOS 26, we don't have any specifics, but basically a design update and a few accessibility feature updates we've already heard about. Home OS could be shown off as well for the first time. So we have audio OS on the home pod, but we could get an all new home OS to go along with the update redesigns as well. And then vision OS 26, we know we're getting that, but it could get an eye scrolling update according to Mark German. Also magic wand support to basically allow you to use VR controllers from PlayStation and others to control the interface. That's actually something I welcome as I prefer that method of input other than looking at things with my eyes and tapping my fingers together. So I'm looking forward to that and I'll try that out as well. So we are looking for some big changes here as far as the design, but when it comes to iOS, that's where the biggest changes seem to be. Now, in addition to that, we've also heard about some features before that look like they may not make it to iOS 26 and will be pushed to iOS 27. According to Mark Gurman, the calendar updates he talked about would be pushed to next year. And Apple is currently hiring a calendar engineer and has recently purchased a company as well. So this makes sense where it would take more time. And some of the updates there would be for the next year or at least later on. The health app with AI assistant that Mark Gurman mentioned before also seems like it would be pushed to iOS 27. So it looks like that's going to get a full redesign, but may not drop into iOS until the following year. So health in general looks like it's okay for now, but it may be stuck on the current version where they'll change that a little bit later. As far as iOS 27, it also has a code name of buttercup, according to Mark Gurman. So this year is Solarium, next year would be Buttercup, and then of course they have others in the works as well. We don't expect any hardware at WWDC 25 this year, but we could see some surprises, maybe with some updates to the Mac Pro, as that still doesn't have the M3 Ultra chipset, and we don't have some updates here and there throughout to things such as the Studio Display or Pro Display XDR. It would be a perfect time for them to announce this, but according to Mark Gurman, he doesn't expect anything. It's possible we could see something as a surprise, but at this point, it looks like it's mostly going to focus on a redesign. Now, after the event, we expect iOS 26 and all the other operating systems to be released to developers. Since the keynote starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, usually it takes about two hours and then we'll have the update by 4 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have to install it, see what's new, and Apple typically publishes a release notes update where they go over all of the major features throughout the whole OS. So 
we can expect that. And then of course the public beta usually comes out at the end of June or early July. And then the public release is typically in September. So if Apple continues to release things on the same schedule, like they have for years, that's what we can expect. So as far as anything else though, hopefully we'll get a few surprises we weren't expecting and I can't wait to see what it actually looks like. Let me know what you think. Are you going to be installing the developer beta, public beta, or would you rather just have stability rather than a redesign? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.